Today we're gonna make two versions of pumpkin pie completely from scratch. The first is gonna be that jiggly custard based pumpkin pie that we all know and love, the one that we all grew up with. The second pie is called pumpkin chiffon. It's a lighter, airier pumpkin pie that's stabilized with gelatin. It's basically like a fluffy light pumpkin mousse. You'll see. And when I say that we're making this all from scratch, I really mean it. So of course we're gonna make the filling in the actual pie crust from scratch, but we're also gonna make pumpkin spice, whipped cream, and pumpkin puree from the ground up. Yeah, this one's gonna be a doozy. Okay, so the workflow looks something like this. I made the pie dough, whipped cream, pumpkin spice, and pumpkin puree the day before baking the pies. That way, when I'd like to bake, all I have to do is roll out the dough, make the filling, and stick everything in the oven. But, you know, do whatever fits your schedule. Alright, pie dough. This dough is a classic French pastry crust called pâté brisé, probably mispronounced that. Into a cold stand mixer bowl, add two cups of bread flour, two and a quarter sticks of cubed cold unsalted butter, and a pinch of salt. Mix that around, then pop on the paddle attachment, make sure it's cold, and mix on medium until the butter and the flour get together and sort of look like coarse sand. Then pour in roughly a quarter cup of cold water and keep it running until the dough comes together. Plop the dough out onto a floured work surface and quickly shape it into a large hockey puck shape. Wrap it up tightly and let it rest in the fridge for at least three hours or overnight if you can. And since we already have the stand mixer out, onto the whipped cream. So we are going to make a stabilized whipped cream, a classic vanilla whipped cream, and we're going to stabilize it with gelatin so that it doesn't weep and sort of sink on us and it stays nice and perky. So this is a vanilla bean pie. Which can be pretty pricey, so if you need to, just sub it out for a teaspoon of vanilla extract, or you know, just leave it out completely. Totally your call. To stabilize the whipped cream, I'm going to bloom one packet of powdered gelatin in a tablespoon of water and microwave it for 10 seconds. I know this might seem kind of odd, but this is a really cool trick to do if you want to make whipped cream ahead of time and make sure it stays nice and poofy. It's best to use a chilled stand mixer bowl and dairy for this. The coldness sort of helps the fat emulsify more efficiently and hold that emulsification for longer, but it's okay if your stuff isn't mega icy. In goes two cups of heavy cream and the whisk attachment. Let that go on medium high for a bit. Once the cream begins to thicken and kind of looks like that, add in four tablespoons of powdered sugar, the vanilla bean paste or extract, a pinch of salt, and let that run until the cream begins to look like, you know, whipped cream. Once it starts to look really thick, go ahead and pour in that bloomed gelatin and bump the speed up to high for five seconds or so. Toss it in a container and that'll last in the fridge for a couple days. It's pumpkin time. Yes, the oomp is silent. To make pumpkin puree for baking, look for these little guys, sometimes fittingly labeled as baking pumpkins. <laughs> Stay away from the jumbo carving pumpkins, we don't want those. Now we need to slice and dice these beauties, and it's a really good time to harness the power of the cleaver if you have one. <laughs> Once that's out of your system, use a large spoon to gut out the stringy flesh and the seeds from the pumpkin. You can set those aside for later if you want, we don't need them. Lube up and season the pumpkins with a bit of salt and neutral oil, then they go into a 400 degree Fahrenheit 204 Celsius oven for 45 minutes to an hour until you can pierce them easily with a knife with little to no resistance. Let the pumpkins cool down a bit before removing the skin, or you can be impatient and stupid like me and just go for it and burn your hand. A cool part about roasting your own pumpkins for puree is the extra flavor that comes from slightly caramelized pumpkin. It's something you just don't get from the canned stuff. If you have a food processor, now is the time to whip it out. And if you don't, you know, just use a regular blender or an immersion blender, that works great too. We wanted this puree to be very smooth. This technique works with most other winter squashes too. You know, think acorn, butternut, curry, etc. Set that aside and store it in the fridge. It'll stay good for about a week. Pumpkin spice. Uh, fun fact, this stuff actually doubles as currency amongst basic white women. It's very valuable stuff. I like a blend of nutmeg, clove, ground ginger, cinnamon, mace, and believe it or not, black pepper. And this is mace. It's a dried outer sheath of the nutmeg seed. It's very similar, but a bit spicier than nutmeg. Add one and a half tablespoons of ground cinnamon, two teaspoons ground ginger, one teaspoon mace, nutmeg, clove, then lastly half a teaspoon of black pepper. Toast the spices in a dry pan over medium heat until they become very fragrant. <laughs> then remove from the heat and pop them directly into a spice grinder. A regular blender or mortar and pestle works just fine for this. Also, I encourage you to mess with the spice ratios to find a blend that you really dig, but this is a great starting point. Dump less spices in a sealable container and set it aside for now. <sighs> okay, finally, we have arrived. This is the next day and it's time to bake. Let's start with the pumpkin chiffon pie. 
Snag and unwrap one of the two pie dough pucks from the fridge and roll it out on a floured work surface. Go for roughly an eighth of an inch thickness, then carefully transfer the dough to the pie dish. For the chiffon, I'm using a deep tart pan, but feel free to use a regular pie dish if that's what you have. Lay the dough in, then poke the bottom a few times with a fork. This is going to help the air release and reduce any puff as it bakes. Trim the excess dough away, then let this all rest in the fridge for an hour. An important part to note about chiffon pie is that we aren't going to bake the filling. Instead, we're going to bake the crust all the way through in the oven, then add the filling and let it set in the fridge. Line a piece of tin foil in the pie crust. If you have pie weights, now's the time to use them. If not, some dried beans work just fine. Blind bake the crust with the foil in the beans for 30 minutes on 400 degree Fahrenheit, 204 Celsius, then remove the foil, reduce the heat to 350 Fahrenheit, 176 Celsius, and finish baking the crust for an additional 30 minutes or until golden brown and cooked through fully. While that's going, let's make the filling. We're going to use a double boiler here to make sure that the egg yolks don't curdle on us and scramble. Position a medium saucepan filled up a quarter of the way with water below a large mixing bowl. Boom, that's a double boiler. Once the water's steaming over medium heat in the double boiler, pour in half a cup of evaporated milk, three egg yolks, then one and a half cups of the pumpkin puree. Give that a mix. Now in with half a cup of sugar, one and a half tablespoons of pumpkin spice, and a pinch of salt. Keep this mixture moving and gently cook it until bubbling and things begin to thicken up. After five minutes or so, remove the chiffon filling from the double boiler and pour one packet of gelatin powder into a quarter cup of cold water and give that a mix. After a few minutes, pour the gelatin water mixture back into the chiffon filling and whisk that until it's all blended up. What gives this pie its signature fluffy consistency is whipped egg whites. Essentially, we're making a meringue by whipping three egg whites with half a cup of sugar. Start by whipping egg whites to soft peaks, then slowly add in the sugar. Once all the sugar is in, bump the speed up a bit and whip it up until ye peaks be stiff. That to be a stiff peak, mate. And I mean very stiff. Transfer the meringue to the rest of the chiffon filling and gently fold in the whites. You really don't want to overmix or hulk it too hard here or you'll collapse the egg whites that we just spent time whipping up. By now, the pie crust should be cooked through. I'm a derp and didn't record video, but if you're using a deep tart dish, use a knife to cut off the overhanging dough from the dish, then, you know, just spoon in the filling. Smooth off the top and make a little design if you want, then it's in the fridge to set until chilled down fully. We'll come back to this later. Okay, cool. Let's make the classic pumpkin pie now. I've already rolled out my dough and chilled everything, so all we need to do now is blind bake the crust and make the filling. Blind bake the crust for 20 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 204 Celsius, with the foil and the beans, then remove the foil and the beans and finish for another 5 to 10 minutes. We want the crust cooked halfway through. While that's going, let's make the filling. And the good news is that classic pumpkin pie filling couldn't be any easier to make. To a large mixing bowl, add 3 whole eggs, 1 and a quarter cup heavy cream, and 15 ounces, aka 1 can of pumpkin puree. Whisk those wet ingredients together, then in with one and a quarter cup dark brown sugar, one and a half tablespoons pumpkin spice, a pinch of salt, and lastly a tablespoon of cornstarch which is going to help thicken the mixture. By now your pumpkin pie filling should have that classic amber color and is now ready to go into our blind baked pie crust. Fill the pie about three-fourths up the crust, then it's into a 375 Fahrenheit 190 Celsius oven for roughly 45 minutes to an hour or until the center of the pie is just barely set. After 45 minutes in the oven, check back every 5 minutes to see if it's done. And if your crust gets a little bit too al dente, you can protect it by laying over some foil like I did. The pie should have a tiny bit of jiggle to it in the middle, but it'll solidify as the pie cools. And I know it's going to be hard, but let this beauty cool down fully for a few hours before digging in. Alright, a few hours has gone by, our chiffon is set, and the tradish pie is cooled down. I was taught to serve this chiffon pie with a bit of whipped cream over the top. Look how pretty she is. Alright, so let's compare the two pies. Even though I admittedly don't have much a sweet tooth, to me pumpkin pie always has been a thing of beauty. The color on the chiffon is a touch lighter than the classic pie, and the crust seems a little flakier. That's probably because we cooked it fully with nothing inside. Cutting into it, you can see what I mean. This thing is like 10 seconds from floating away. It's so dang light. While the tradish pumpkin feels a little bit more like pumpkin fudge, which if it isn't already should definitely be a thing. Pumpkin fudge. The good news, you can't go wrong with either option. You know, try making both for yourself this year and see which one your family likes more. 
I want to give a colossal shout out to Grandma Eileen, my girlfriend's grandmother. Lean Cuisine, thank you so much for sharing your technique and recipe with me. It was delicious. Thank you, Senzai. So this episode was actually inspired by an old Elton Brown Good Eats episode on the Food Network back in like the mid early 2000s. I remember watching Elton Brown make pumpkin puree from scratch and thinking like it was so crazy and weird because I thought that pumpkin puree was this man-made synthetic thing that you could only buy sort of like in cans from a factory. Little did I know you could make your own. And yeah, I wasn't the brightest kid growing up and I'm still not to this day, but here we are. And one more thing, if you don't like pumpkin pie, I really recommend giving the pumpkin chiffon a try. It's a lot different, the flavor's similar, but the texture, the mouthfeel, especially with the flaky crust, it's a lot different. You might really like it, so give it a go. Don't give up on yourself. And as usual, thank you so much for wasting your time with me. Uh, if you wanna follow my Instagram and my TikToks, I have a lot quicker, more short form and uh, sort of daily life content over there. So if that interests you, peep that. And I will see your gorgeous noggin next week. Total love.